Hello and welcome back to the third row. I have just received this little Mechlin 4102 luggage van. It is the last item I needed to complete the passenger section of the collection. I was expecting the process to take a few years, and that certainly happened, but I would never have expected to be looking for this van until the very end. Let me explain. It is impossible to imagine a pre-1970 German railway theme without Donnerbuchsen. This literally, and rather unfortunately, translates to Thunderboxes, a nickname they received because of the noise they generated whilst on the move. These were ubiquitous from the 1920s onwards and could still be seen on West German branch lines as late as the end of the 1970s. Merklin, being a German company, of course made some, first in the form of the 4002 and the luggage van 4003, which were produced from 1951 onwards. Here is an example of a 4002, it might look crude by today's standards, but at the time of its release it was on par with the upper range of the Merklin production as far as detail is concerned. We have a few vents on the roof, on the side we have a few signs, some plastic windows and lovely lines of rivets and seams. The chassis is quite detailed too. It's all not bad for a bit of sheet metal, we even have some fancy couplings, and it is no wonder that Merklin kept this line in the programme for 20 years. In 1971, Merklin discontinued the 4002 and 4003. This mirrored what had been happening on the real railways for a while, and by that time the majority of the Donnerbuchsen had been withdrawn. The only thing left in the catalogue that vaguely resembled a Donnerbuchser was the humble 4000. Now, this is what I call crude. In 1980, Merklin reintroduced the coach type with the release of a series of four models based on a new tooling in a Deutsche Reichsbahn livery. I am sure most of you are familiar with these. The 4100 is a second third class coach, the 4101 a third class coach, and to go with these we have not one, but two luggage vans, the 4102, this one, and the 4103, which is identical, but with the addition of taillights. I guess this was done to allow more prototypical compositions. This series would remain in production for the next decade. In 1989, a second version of the series was released, this time with Deutsche Bundespan liveries. Compared with the first version, the only differences are the Deutsche Bundespan logos and the various inscriptions and classes. Everything else is identical. We have another 4100, then another 4101, and two luggage vans again, another 4102, and another 4103 with taillights. The two series were sold at the same time in the 1989-1990 catalogue. The Reichsbahn series was discontinued the following year. The Deutsche Bundesbahn version remained in production until 1993. So we have quasi-identical models sharing the same model numbers in the same colours using identical packaging. The stage is set for confusion. As a result, it is very frequent to see lots labelled wrongly. It is also very easy for a seller to pack the wrong box. Add to this that the Bundespan versions seem to have sold less than the 
Rice Pan versions, and that for both series the 4102 seems to have been the least popular of the two luggage vans, and suddenly the 4102 in either liveries becomes an item that is rather difficult to find, oddly enough. And this becomes even harder when looking for something in an acceptable shape. All this made it quite difficult for me to get my hands on what I needed. It took me at least five attempts, but I lost count, to be honest, because I was sent Reispan coaches instead of Bundespan coaches many, many times too. But we are finally there now. Let me put the newest addition next to his sister models. This completes the family. And if we look on the other side, I got the complete Reispan Brigade out too. As a direct result of the confusion I mentioned earlier, I have more of them, as you can see. I was refunded and told to keep a car I was sent by mistake on a few occasions. Now, let's see what we can do with all this. We'll start with the Reispan. There wasn't much choice in the catalogue in the 1980s in terms of locomotives. The year the coaches were released, there was only a BR38, an ex-Prussian P8, in Deutsche Reisbahn livery. This is it. It's model number 3099. Yeah, it's beautiful, isn't it? Very nice design, those P8s. Right, I've set up a longish train for this one. I'm not sure the order of the passenger coaches is correct, but a P8 is always nice to look at, even though this is not the quietest among Merklin logos of that era. And that's it, we're off. Beautiful. There was only a couple of Reispan releases later in the 1980s. First, there was a Baureihe 85. Uh, I've got it in the shed. Let me get it out now. Yeah, it's a very nice model, but I don't think it pulled Donna Buxen in the 1930s. You see, it was made for the Höllentalbahn, and the coaches used there were different because they needed special braking systems. Later on, there was also a Baureihe 86 in photographic livery from the set uh, 3100 that was released in 1987. Now, I've put a link to a video for this one. Uh, I presented the set a while back. I think it would look a bit silly, so I won't get it out today. Then, in 1989, uh, we got a Baureihe 75 which was released as part of set 2865. There it is. Now that's a lovely little engine too. It's missing its whistle here. I managed to break it somehow. I didn't notice. Anyway, it still works. Uh, we are going to uh, give this one a shorter train with the luggage van at the back this time. So we can see a few tail lights. Okay, we're ready. Let's send it on its way. 
off we go. Now this little thing is smooth as a sewing machine. It is a lovely thing, isn't it? Okay, now let's have a look at the Bundespan. Here we have plenty of choice. So we'll start with a classic, the queen of the commuter lines, the Baureihe 78. So here's a Märklin 3106. And for compositions, we even have pictures to help us. I've put credits to everything I'm using in this video in the description as usual. So, we have an example with a push-pull consist in Wuppertal in 1963 with five coaches. Then we have another example from Wuppertal in 1961 with only three coaches. I think we'll keep things simple for this one. And we're also going to run the loco backwards with three coaches. Off we go! Now this loco is not going to struggle anywhere. Well, the consist is simple, but I think the effect is uh, quite good. Nice. Okay, let's move to the next one. Uh, we have another classic, the Baureihe 24, the legendary Märklin 3003. And here we have a few pictures too. Here's one taken in Bielefeld in 1961. And another one taken in Duisburg a bit earlier in 1959. Now this example of the BR24 had already lost its large wind deflectors. Bizarre how things went at the time. Okay, we're going to try and replicate the Bielefeld example. That's not going to be difficult. It's a pretty simple consist. So it's a pretty sight to hear. Let's have a look at it in action. I think this loco would be very nice with a smoke unit. I think I'd need to drill a hole somewhere. I shall investigate at some point. And I think this uh, version of the locomotive is from the 1960s too. It's still going strong despite its age.
Okay, on to our next victim. Remember our P8 from earlier? Well, here's another one. Same model number, 3099, but in Bundespan livery this time. So we have a picture again here. It was taken in Hof in 1960. But trains weren't all that coordinated at the time. Here's another picture taken near Friedberg in 1959. Here we have a mini history of German rolling stock in one consist. We start with Prussian slam door coaches of various types. Then we have a pair of Donnerbuchsen further down. And at the end we have a pair of Umbauwagen, which were made using the chassis of Prussian slam door coaches. So we are kind of going full circle with this consist. I like messy trains, so I'm going to try and emulate this one. And there we are. So we have the P8. Then I used a 4203, a few 4200 and 4202s that were produced from 1986 onwards. They are all Prussian coaches in Deutsche Bundespan liveries. After that we have a couple of Donnerbuchsen. And then we have a pair of Umbauwagen, a 4079 and at the end a 4080. So it's probably not exactly as the picture, but at least it's enough to get a feel. So let's get this one on the move too. Ah, it's a beautiful mess. And the loco is coping very well at transformer speed setting 100. Beautiful. Next we have another beauty, the S36, here with model number 3093 in a Bundespan livery too. And here's a picture of another messy train taken near Ungerhausen in 1960. So we're going to try and make this one. That shouldn't be too difficult I think. So let's couple the logo. This one smokes, so I'm going to fill the smoke unit. Quick test. Smoke. Cool. Off we go. Now at this speed setting it is unlikely to smoke much though. We'll see. How lovely.
Now I think we nailed the look on this one. That wasn't difficult. So, as you could see, with only a handful of coaches of various types, it is possible to put together quite a few interesting compositions. That is what makes the 1949 to 1970 period so interesting, in my humble opinion. So I'd like to finish the video with an homage to the ancestors of the stock we saw today, with a combination of coaches released by Merkin in the 1950s. And we'll use a 3031 from the spares box, which itself is from the 1960s. Well, that's beautiful and very nostalgic. And yes, I know the Baureihe 81 at a maximum speed of 45 km per hour. That's about 30 miles per hour. No need to remind me in the comments. OK, that's it for today. I'd like to thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hopefully enough for you to give it a thumbs up and maybe even click the subscribe button if you haven't already done so. Until next time and... Bye for now.